So this word I got from the Lord shared and he used this specifically. So it's Haggai um, from Haggai 1. Both chapters, they, the Haggai is really quite short if you wanted to read it. Um, but I'm reading from right now from Haggai 1, 3, all the way to 11. The, Lord, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it time for you to? Uh, is it time for you yourselves to live in um, paneled houses, while his house lies in ruins? Now the Lord of Armies says this: Think carefully about your ways. You have planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but never have enough to be satisfied. You drink, but never have enough to be happy. You put on clothes, but never have enough to get warm. The wager earner puts his wages. Um, into a bag with a hole in it. The Lord of the army says this, think carefully about your ways. Go up into the hills, bring down lumber and build the house and I will be pleased with it and be glorified, says the Lord. You expect much, sorry, you expected much, but then it's amounted to little. When you brought the harvest to your house, I ruined it. Why? This is a declaration of the Lord of armies. Because my house, still lies in ruins, while each of you is busy with your own house. So on your account, the skies have withheld the dew and the land its crop. I have summoned the drought on the fields and the hills, on the grain, uh, on the grain, new wine, fresh oil, and whatever it grows yields, one man and animal, on man and animal, and on all that your hands produce. Guys, finally said it. So, okay. So now, the Lord is basically so Haggai. Let me just give you the background so that we can take it from there. So the background of this scripture is that remember when um, Cyrus, the Lord raised up Cyrus, and then Cyrus sent release the Jews from Babylon, and they could go back home, right? Right. So they go back home. They and they stop building. Um, they start building uh, the, 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 the temple of the Lord because they also left with the vessels. Remember the vessels that Belshazzar, remember Belshazzar, the one that was drinking and was using the vessels of the, the temple that had been sanctified for the Lord. And then the, it was written as well, many, many, uh, take him that guy. So what happened then, uh, those vessels were taken back and they were sent with them to go build their places of worship back in um, Israel. So as they get back to Israel, um, people then start worrying about their own houses. And then they kind of stop building the, the house of the Lord and they just start continuing uh, building their panel houses and things like that. So what's interesting is that as the Lord gave me this word, he really like basically led me to both these chapters. And I thought, okay, you know, um, uh, Babylon was, you know, obviously was destroyed and the Jews was released. Lord, is that what you're trying to say? And he says, no. And, and like I said, it, think carefully, like listen to this uh, from verse five, chapter one, verse five. Now the Lord of Army says, think carefully about your ways. You have planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but never have enough to be satisfied. You drink, but never have enough to be happy. You put on clothes, but never enough to get warm. The wager earner puts his wages into a bag with the hole in it. And I thought, okay. And then he says, um, so on your account from here, like if you look at from verse 10, then he says, so on your account, the skies um, have withheld the dew and the land its crops. I have summoned a drought. On the fields and on the hills, on the grain, new wine, fresh oil, and whatever the ground yields, on man and animal, and on all your hands produce. So our hands, basically, have been bound in a basket as well. We are barely able to produce. So the temple now, as we know, the temple is, is no longer, in, in, it's no longer a building. The temple is you and me. We are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Lord basically put a question is, how is your temple? Is your temple in ruins? So 
How are you worshipping? So how are you worshipping? Are you worshipping the Lord in truth and spirit? Um, how's your walk with the Lord? You know, are, are you... Do you, are you feeling, do you have accountability for the things that you do? Because most of the times, you know what we do, guys, to kind of um, avoid um, getting to know the Lord or even worshipping him in truth and spirit. We will, we will supplement it for worship of man, worship of people in position. So that to say, but Lord, I served so and so really well. I served this person really well. That's not with the Lord. That's not a relationship with the Lord. And again, it's interesting where the Lord is saying, my building is in ruins. Why is that important for your building, my building, to be not left in ruins? Because why? You and I, everybody else on the earth, is actually created to worship. We either worship things of the world or we worship the Lord. To the point where people that don't even believe in Jesus still have a belief system. You know, that's, so you and I believe without a doubt that God is the creator of all things. Jesus' son came to die for everybody on the earth to live so that they don't have to die in their transgressions, right? This is what we believe in that on the third day he was resurrected, which is why we believe in him. That if I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, my sins are taken and he gives me his Holy Spirit so that I can walk in truth and the spirit and then one day when I'm passing, I'm not going to go to show. I'm not going to go to hell. The Lord is going to raise me up and rescue me from the clutches of death, a uh, hell and grave. So anyways, Jesus now is saying, why, why is he insisting that the building be built? Like why? Because I mean, he's God. I mean, you would think that that's be too little for him. The reason why he's insisting is because there's a vacuum there. We are called to worship. When there's a vacuum, what happens is then we will worship other things. So if they didn't raise up the altar of the Lord, didn't raise up the building of God, they would have most probably taken the gods of Babylon, which we know were not good. They were evil. I stood at a point where Daniel and them would uh, fast, would not eat what they were eating when they were celebrating their the gods and things. So imagine you coming from a place where things, the gods are just, they're not of God. They are really bad. And you are coming from captivity and you're carrying these things with you, right? And the Lord says, I've raised up an altar for me. Start worshiping me in truth and your spirit. You uh, rise up, stand up. Otherwise, what's going to happen is going to be a vacuum. You'll start worshiping your house. You'll start worshiping musicians. You'll start worshiping celebrities. You'll, whatever celebrity it can be a worldly celebrity. You could be a, a Christian celebrity. But either way, you are called to worship. This is why it is so easy for us to just worship things when we are not worshiping God. Because there's a vacuum there. So the Lord is saying, um, learn to worship me, lay down your idols. If you feel that the, like, uh, what's called you watching you on social media for too long, I say, Lord, I'm going to fast social media for you. I'm going to fast. And then you're also going to see like how much it's got a hold of you. You know, these clicks, you're using your thumb, your eyes are always there and always scrolling, all of that stuff. All of a sudden, you're not doing that with your hands and your eyes. What is there now left to do with your body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit? It frees you up now to start worshiping, saying, Lord, well, what would you like my hands to accomplish, which are your hands, so that he can remove them from the basket? So there is deliverance for us if we come out of idolatry if we raise up the word of God in our temples, right? Which is the temple of the Holy Spirit in our bodies, right? So give, lay your body. So I know like there's scriptures that are really confusing for some people because let me read this one. First, uh, Colossians 3, 16 to, to 17. Give me a second. Now I've got a, it's wonderful that I now have to look for it. Uh, here. No, no, for, uh, 1 Corinthians, sorry, not Colossians, 1 Corinthians, I was wrong there, and I said, as I said it, it felt wrong, you know, as you say something, it's like, mm, Colossians is, doesn't have more than one chapter, okay, so it's 1 uh, Corinthians 3, 16 to 17, okay, here's 3, 16, 
here it is here's the wonderful scripture do you not do you, don't you yourselves know that you are god's temple and that the spirit of god lives in you if anyone destroys god's temple god will destroy him for god's temple is holy and that's what you are isn't that nice it's you are now god's temple and he's saying don't leave yourself in ruins whether you have um you in your altar in your sorry in the, the the body that's meant to be worshiping the temple the temple of the holy spirit that's meant to be worshiping holy spirit it could be addictions and there's an array of addiction guys it could be from food obviously we always know it's drugs it could be your phone it could be uh, sometimes even people whatever addiction you have lay it at the feet of jesus and ask him to help you the walk of the lord is not always um about prophecies and things like that yes we stand on prophecy we stand on the word of the lord but he also wants you to surrender how do we surrender we bring what's happening here in the mind and the body what's happening and we place it at his feet and we say lord this is how i was feeling today this is what i was thinking now let me give you an example today i went shopping with my sister we went to get food and there was some, there's something wrong with the car and it was it was not something we already know the battery's not charging and um my you know there's a belief that the battery needs to be changed or whatever um but also there's a belief that if it's put on a long charge then the power is going to come back yeah you know etc etc et you know how it does right okay so um instead of speaking faith I didn't speak faith as I was telling my sister that, look, I said to her, look, that battery is dead. It's dead. We're just only doing this to appease people because we do need a new battery so that everything is, 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 is crossed out. And as I said it, Holy Spirit says, that's wrong. You're not speaking faith. And I thought, you know what? You're right, Holy Spirit. Because what? I had to then, as I'm walking, I start repenting to the Holy Spirit. I actually, as soon as I said it, like, I, I bound the word and I canceled it in Jesus' name. Why is that important to watch what we say? Because the Lord says that you will eat the fruit thereof. Whatever you utter on your tongue, you will eat the fruit thereof. So I don't want to eat death all the time. I don't want to be eating. I want to eat life. I want to eat good things. I, and I want the light inside of me not to be darkness. So... I want to see it, uh, the, the, the stuff from his perspective, perspective, like what for God, things are not impossible. So even as I'm telling you, if you're struggling with doubt, I'm going to sound like um, an idealist. I'm going to sound those people that like fairy tales and things like that. No, the point is I didn't create this earth. The Lord did. And if he's telling me the one that created the earth that start talking differently, who am I going to believe, you or him? You didn't create the earth. You didn't even create me. You don't even know what my name is. You don't know where I'm from. You don't know who I am. You see what I'm saying? So then with your cynicism and your negative way of thinking versus the creator of the universe, when I weigh this, when I look at these choices, I, I'm looking at him more. I'm like, okay, you know what? You're right because you definitely know what you're talking about as the creator, somebody that's created. So if you want me to create an atmosphere around me of faith, of hope, that even within me, I learn to bring out these things instead of killing seeds or speaking against things. Um, I think, I think I'll, I will go with it. I'll, I'd rather use his wisdom versus mine or the world's wisdom. So the temple of the Lord, we, ye are the body of the Holy Spirit. And he loves you and he blesses you. I will speak to you soon, guys. Bye.